Let's define the difference between petroleum refining and petrochemical industry because they are extensively used as if they were equal, but in my opinion, and let's say also technically, they are not the same, they are different. Petroleum refining comes always first before petrochemistry or petrochemical industry. And we're going to see why. But probably you have seen this before. And I like to set this as the petroleum refinery. Essentially what we want to do is to refine crude oil. Crude oil comes here, preheated, desalted, dehydrated. And what we do is essentially break up these in several fractions. We also have several units which are related to the petroleum refining alone. Petrochemicals are another thing away. But I have several students that ask me if we use several chemistry in this reformer or this alkylation unit or cracking units, therefore that's petrochemistry. And yeah, you could say that, but I rather prefer to stick these into the petroleum refining because we, what we are focused on petroleum refining is essentially fuels as well as some asphalts, lubes and so on. But the main goal is generation of gasoline, jet fuel, diesel and so on. The main scope of petrochemistry or petrochemicals is to convert into much more valuable materials. But let me tell you one thing guys that actually in real life about 5% of the barrel or let's say all petroleum crude oil, only 5% will be converted into more useful materials, that is petrochemicals. All the leftovers are going to be used mostly for gas applications, gasoline, kerosene, which is used typically in jet A fuels, gas oil, also diesels, probably you know diesel is also a very common fuel, domestic fuel, maybe some lubes, heavy gas oils, bunker oils, all those oils that are technically very heavy are also used there and residual material such as coke, asphalt and so on. So the petrochemistry comes mostly here. Nafta is one of the raw materials used in petrochemistry. But the raw material for petroleum refining will be crude oil. Okay, so just that keep that in mind. Crude oil is the main raw material for petroleum refining. As the name implies, we are refining petroleum. And in petrochemistry, technically we could use all of these, but in real life, naphtha will be mostly used in order to convert into further chemicals. What type of chemicals? Well, we're going to see later on. These are, this is the simplified diagram I, has, I have been showing you, but this is a little bit more seriously or more, let's say, real. It's the typical distillation column. You have your crude oil, you have the atmospheric column, which processes gas, several cuts like naphtha, heavy naphtha, jet fuel, kerosene, diesel, gas oil, and atmospheric bottoms. The atmospheric bottoms typically go to the vacuum distillation and continue with light vacuum gas oil, heavy vacuum gas oil, and of course some asphalts. As you can see, there are several hydro treaters. We're going to see those later on. The famous catalytic reformer, the famous isomerization plant, Merox, which is mercaptan oxidation, and the Klaus sulfur plant I was telling you, also amine treating, which is cleaning of gases, hydrocrackers, FCC, which is fluid catalytic cracker, delay coker, alkylation units, and so on. So there are many units, and as you can see, there are plenty of process pathways. So for instance, this states right now gas, but this gas will be used later on here in order to increase the pure well, let's say in order to ensure that we're not losing material. So all these little gas fractions are not just going away. We are going to be recovering them. Hydrogen sulfide, yeah, sulfur plant, that's fine. We're going to be working with coke, gasolines, and so on. So gasoline blending pool is huge in this diagram. We're going to see later on that actually we have several blending pools. We have diesel or fuel oil blending pools and so on. Now let's stick and check out what is petrochemical industry or pet petrochemistry. So I said before, crude oil is the main raw material for petroleum refining, which separates naphtha, gas, kerosene, gasoline, gas oils, and other fractions, heavier fractions actually. So gas, we can get methane, ethane, propane, and methane. We can send those 
to sell them direct to a consumer, for instance, I'm pretty sure that you have seen propane tanks, maybe for a barbecue, you know that propane is very convenient. It's not that explosive, but still is flammable, which helps to cook or makes it a good fuel for cooking, butane similarly. You also know LPG, liquefied petroleum gases, which is a mixture of these gases. Also, maybe you have seen or heard about methane or methane, which is typically seen in natural gas, still used in cooking and heating systems. But still, in theory, we could, we could convert these into ethylene, propylene, and butylene or butadiene in order to convert them into much more valuable materials. For instance, from NAFTA, you will get ethylene, propylene, butylenes, and butadiene, which are used as plastic, plastic, several plastic applications, and rubbers and synthetic material. Kerosene is a fuel for aviation, you already know that. Uh, gas oil, technically light and heavy. The light one will be used as diesel, heavy one will be used for, let's say, bunker oil or maybe heavy oils and so on. Then you also know about these other fractions, which technically speaking could be asphalts and so on. But what I want to show you is that technically we could convert all these into much more valuable materials. But the problem is that because fuels are in a huge demand, we need to convert first fuels and then we can get back to petrochemicals. So in real life, the market will be driving our petroleum consumption. If the gasolines, diesels, jet fuels increases, then the production of fuels must increase. If the production of plastics increases and fuels are dropping, then you will see an increase in the petrochemical or the petrochemistry industry. Okay, so I just wanted to ensure that we are making this separation. Petroleum refining focuses mostly on fuels. Petrochemical industry focuses mostly in the, let's say, much more interesting chemicals, for instance, the, where you see the aromatics, ethylene, propylene, and plastics that derive them. Actually, here is a list of petrochemicals. I just want to show you where are we, crude oil. It's distillated. And then we get natural gas condensates. We get NAFTA. And we get several other cuts. Actually, here they are. We got diesel. We got kerosene, gasoline, fuel oil, waxes, asphalts, coke, sulfur, and so on. This is the main goal of petroleum refining. So all the red things is only petroleum refining and all the leftovers are petrochemical industry. So methanol production, probably you were wondering, methanol sounds like something that it's produced from something bio biological, also maybe ethylene, alcohol, what else we have here? Maybe ethanol, yeah, ethanol, propylene or isopropanol. All these comes actually from petroleum. So that's interesting that we have plenty of these products. They seem to be a, a lot, huge of them. But actually, this is only 5% of petroleum. Most of it will be unfortunately burned as fuels because nowadays we are addicted to fuels. We are using extensively huge amounts of energy and we're not using that much into materials per se okay anyways this is a petroleum refining course so we're going to define our scope only to the refinery which is per se also a huge thing to do because it is as stated before a little bit complex as you can see here okay so that's what i wanted to show you on petroleum refining versus petrochemical industry now let's check out what are the specific course objectives.